People say, I'm a charitable person, I'm a good person, I just don't pray. Right? And then there are people who pray very, very regularly, but they're horrible to their family and to the needs of the, need, the needy, and they're greedy in their wealth, and cheat in their businesses, etc., etc. People try to separate these two things. What does Allah do in this surah? He makes the two things inseparable. You can't separate these two things. If you're good to people, you have to be good to Allah Azza wa Jal. If you're good to Allah Azza wa Jal, you have to be good to people. It's in, you know, he fused the two. And this is the logic of the Qur'an. It doesn't let you fall into these extremes and traps and you know, boxes that you create for yourselves. It keeps you balanced. Every surah produces its own set of balance. You know, that, that, that keeps us from falling into these moral dilemmas and these problems that we have. The two things that will keep your heart soft and keep prove to you that you are not in denial of the final you know, reward and punishment. The deen, that deen. The two proofs of it are how you pray and how much you give. Giving, your dealings with people, and your prayer to Allah Azza wa These are an indication of how strong your belief in the akhirah is and what you should, you should be expecting from it. And if our prayers are weak, that's a life project now. That becomes a mission. And if our dealings with the orphans, and we don't even talk about the needs of the other, if we're not concerned about these things, then these things become a concern first and foremost in your own family. You know for a fact, there are people in your family that need help. And there are some people you don't like. You don't like your cousin, you don't get along with him, but he needs help. You don't like your aunt, she yells at you, she's annoying, but she needs help, she's financially in need. These people deserve it no matter what, because you're not doing it for them. You're doing it because it proves to you for yourself, and inshallah ta'ala it's a case with Allah, that you believe in being paid back in the end. May Allah Azza wa make us of those who believe truly in our hearts. May Allah Azza wa correct our prayers and keep them from these, you know, these despicable acts. May Allah Azza wa make us the best to each other and to all of humanity and make us living models of the beauty of this deen. You see, when you deny the akhirah, you've denied something that was in your heart. And when you deny something in your heart, your heart becomes a little hard. And when your heart becomes hard, one of the things that goes away from your heart is mercy. Because for believers, Allah says, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ Right? ثُمَّ كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You know, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرُ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ Iman, one of its consequences is mercy. And when there's no iman, what's gonna go away also? The things that are good inside the heart will also start disappearing and getting rusty. In Surah Al-Alaq, كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى No, the human being, he truly rebels. Why does he rebel? أَرَّآهُ اسْتَغْنَى does he think that he's free of need? Inna ila rabbika ar-ruj'ah. It is only to your master you have to be returned. Rebellion compared with the... Where did it come from? The idea that I don't have to be returned. The two things put together again. One more place. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى as, the, as for the one who gave. This surah is the one who doesn't give. But the one who gave and has taqwa وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى He confirmed the truth. He confirmed the most beautiful thing which is the truth, this Islam. On the other hand, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى And the one who is cheap and doesn't think he needs anyone else. He thinks himself free of need. وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى He lies against the most beautiful truth. So the, the two things are collect, con, connected constantly in the Qur'an in several other places. Sahwa. You know sajdatul sahu, you've heard that term before? Sahu in Arabic means to be uh, neglect, to forget something out of neglect. To forget something because it's not the most important thing to you. This is sahu. Something else was on your mind and you forgot what you think is less important. And you overlooked it. This is called sahu. Sahu also includes that if you, were, if you caught the prayer well and good, if you didn't catch it, eh, no big deal. Sahu also means you made plans to make salah, or you made plans to go to the mall, or you made plans to go play sports, or you made plans to go see a movie or whatever, I hope not. But you went to, made all these plans, but what was not part of your plans? Salah time. You plan the wedding and it conflicts with Maghrib time. Ah, no big deal. Right? You, 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 you registered for courses and it's right at Jum'ah time. But you know, this, the professor is easy A, that's why I took this course. I, you know, it fits my schedule better. Right? And your, your work breaks, they may conflict with Salah time. In other words, you, you organize your life, but what's not a concern in how you organize your life? The prayer. You're careless about it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And so you go on a picnic or you invite people over for a party or something and salah time came and went, it's okay, we're busy right now. You know, it's not that big of a deal. This is sahun. Neglectful. 
Now Allah Azza wa Jal first of all mentions before he gets to the bigger crime, your first, the first reason you deserve the worst kind of destruction is you have this attitude about the prayer. This attitude. You know there's an ayah in the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa a few places, just I want to give you some idea of the importance of what salah is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What salah means. One place, the conversation happens between Allah and Musa. Allah introduces Himself to Musa a.s. Himself, Himself. What does He say to him? Innani Allah, an Allah. I am Allah, no doubt. فَعْبُدْنِي be, Worship only me. Enslave yourself only to me. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي And establish the prayer so you can remember me. I mean, think about that. Musa a.s. is just talking to Allah. You think he's ever gonna forget Allah now? When you talk to somebody important, you never forget. You never forget. You, somebody comes over to you, you, say, you, know, you know who I met? You know who came over to my house? You know who I spoke to on the phone? Somebody important that you meet? It becomes an imprinted memory in your mind and something, the point of conversation, everyone you meet. You know who I've had a talk with? This famous person. Who is he talking to? Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah says, no, no, no. That remembrance is not enough to really remember me. You better establish salah. Subhanallah. Now there's this ayah. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin. Let me translate roughly. No doubt my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death all belong to Allah. Life and death is pretty big things. What came first? Salat. Salat is for Allah. I was thinking salat at the end. Of course my life belongs to Allah, so salat is part of it. Part of my life. No, salat first, life and death second. Later on. Subhanallah. What is this salat to Allah Azza wa Jal? You know? And in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, instead of calling it salat, he called it iman. Instead of calling it salah, he called it iman. Allah will not waste your iman. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ When the qibla was changed, Bani Israel come to the believers and say, Oh, all your previous prayers are wasted. Allah says, No, Allah will never waste your iman. What was he actually talking about? Salah. As far as Allah is concerned, there's no difference between iman and salah. No difference between... And by the way, iman is, a, is an act of what? Where does iman exist? Where does it rest? Does it rest in our eyes, in our minds, in our hands, in our tongue? Where does it rest? In our hearts. And so does salah. And these people have salah, but where is it not happening? In their hearts. That's why sahun, ghafla, you know, heedlessness, carelessness, casual attitude, not that important to me. When something's not important to you, or you don't care for it, not caring for something is a problem where? In the heart. That's their first problem. Subhanallah, may Allah Azza wa protect us from sahwa in salah. One comment, oh, Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah, it hurt me when I read it really, is, you know, you pray sometimes and not other times, minas sahin. You belong to this group. You don't take care of the prerequisites of the prayer, you're from the sahun. You pray like a, a bird. You pray like a bird picking pebbles. The Prophet described this when some people make sajda. They bang their head and come right back up. And they wait till the end of salat time. Right? This is sahwa also. This is sahwa also. And to be, uh, to be unmindful of the components of the prayer. You haven't even gone all the way down to ruku, it's time to get back up. Right? It's like you're in a hurry, it hurts you, it hurts you. Like uh, all of a sudden you start getting high blood pressure if you're in ruku too long. So immediately, halfway down already it's time to come up. Immediately into such that you come back up. You barely touch it. it they call it hit and run. <laughs> we used to call it hit and run in college, in the MSA. So you finish your hit and run, because you bang, 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 you're done, done with salah. Get it over with, kind of thing. You know, It's like an obstacle in your day. It's getting in the way of the really important things you have to do. You were created for this. Before Allah mentioned your life and your death, He mentioned your salah. You were created for salah. That's, that's your first job. That's the first thing that the Messenger is commanded. You know, before he, we think of the Messenger as someone who gives da'wah to people, right? That's in Surah Al-Muddathir. Go tell the, warn the people. Before Surah Al-Muddathir, there's Surah Al-Muzzammil. And Surah Al-Muzzammil, what's he told to do first? Pray. Qumi layla illa qalila. Pray first. Then go warn the people. Subhanallah. What, what institution is this that we can be careless and heedless about? He says, إِنَّهُ لَا يُبَالِي سَوَاءٌ صَلَّىٰ أَوْ لَمْ يُصَلِّي This is the person, it doesn't bother him whether he prayed or not. You know, in, in Punjabi, they say, Gali koini. No big deal. No big, what's, what's the big deal? It's okay. 
Don't make a, don't make a big fuss about it. It's just maghrib. It's alright, there's still time. There's still time. You know, and you keep saying that to yourself. Subhanallah. Anyhow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.